Okay, and I'll shut up about our personal bullshit because George hit the start button. Yep. Oh, and um, just a heads up. No, this isn't a fight video. In other words, <laughs> don't come here looking for the UFC fight because it's not it. Kevin and George fight. Christ almighty. I'm just fucking tired uh, of you people going, hey, see me, see me, But you know what you got to understand? It's none of our, the people who watch the show. It's just some fucking troll that's fucking running around trying to get a freebie. Yeah. Go somewhere else, motherfucker. Because you know that shit's not going to... If it's on YouTube, it's on YouTube. I'm going to give you guys... I'm going to help Won't you guys out. Long. It's on YouTube. If the fight Saturday night, it's on YouTube until probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then they're like, we're yanking that shit, bitches, and it's over with. And yes, we know there's a UFC event tonight, but look, face it. We're, it's on Sunday night. We shoot Sunday morning. Kevin and I will cover that shit on Wednesday. Yeah. Into Thursday. And Jim- yes, Jimmy is finally here. Jimmy's I'm here. Back. Jimmy! Now, here's something I came up with on the way over to Kevin's. Since there's absolutely nothing to talk about in sports, and you'll see because you can look over, I guess, that side. Um, Mm -mm. It's right here. See, I'm playing with the things. Oh, okay. (laughs) Anyway, movie remakes. And I came up with, you know which one I want redone? The original Back to the Future. Take Shia LaBeouf or LaBeouf or LaBeouf, whatever. He can play Michael J. Fox. That's the Transformers guy, right? Yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... um, uh, Christopher Walken can play Doc Brown. Christopher Walken would be the best Doc Brown. That's Ever. actually a good ass fucking movie. Remake. And then take the McLaren SLR with the gold wings, and then that's your new uh, DeLorean. That could be a good remake. That really could be a good remake with those guys. Christopher Walken's just good at anything. Now, just think of like how long he's been. He's been around since the fucking Deer yeah, Hunter, he's, yeah, he's and Dogs man. of War. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> who? What movie would you remake, and who would you have play who? Okay, so that's the question. Yeah. If I said I'd, I'd like to redo Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but there's just way too many. I'd like to take the class of Glee, uh-huh. put them in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, get them high as shit and fucking on the lawn. <laughs> that would be good. Who would play Jeff Spicoli? That would be a good one. That would know. be fun. So if you had a, ch- a choice of any movie that you could take and remake. And make put anyone you wanted in. In it. For the characters, who would you do? That'll be good. I want to see what we're going to see on the comic book. Yeah, board. we're talking real movies, not like porn movies that y'all cats are watching and shit. Like Debbie Does Dallas yeah, or those exactly. old things, like the old porn star shorty. Jimmy's mom does <laughs> Montgomery County? <laughs> Pretty much. Again? <laughs> <laughs> One day you're just going to see her roll up in here and be like, yeah, and get you in the back of the head. Anyway, no it's time to me, do some shout outs. Hey, the better. best part was he was over at my house this past week. He didn't have shit to say. Yeah, because he's scared of shit over all cats, nigga. Look at you. Talk <laughs> mad shit on the green screen, and now you're like this. I'm a sec. You, right. need borrow, you need to borrow my car so you, you know, can go over she there. You pull that yeah. shit from you. Be Let me explain. In the All right, here's the situation. I'm standing on the front porch <laughs> right. with Jimmy's mom and dad. Normally, the only time I see his dad is when he's coming out of the closet or watching me do the thing. If his dad snuck you and sucker punch you, nigga, I would scream, especially if Jimmy caught it on film. Look, that man, should be right in the background. The only time I see Jimmy's dad, Maybe he's old got, man the, video. got the full gimp suit on with the zippered mouth in the closet <laughs> watching me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Big long stroke. Okay, shout out time. Jimmy's mom. Okay, you. Jimmy, you have a shout out? No, no, go for it. I definitely have a shout out, and this is to a guy who's followed us for a while. His name is Shane Holland. You guys might know him as Anxiety. Okay, um, he had a good idea. Okay, he said, he said, you know what, you guys should talk about fantasy picks, top five fantasy picks. He said top twenty, and we're like Shane Shana Hayes, <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking Sarah J, because she's got a huge. Ryan Connor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rachel Starr. Abella Anderson. Bella Donna. <laughs> um, is that what we mean by fantasy? Huh? Fan- that's I don't like think fantasy? that's no. what he meant. That's, he didn't mean that. No. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, he's talking about top five fantasy. Well, he's one of top, top 20. And sure. we're like, we, we couldn't do that for you, Shane. We, yeah. But we are definitely going to give him the top five in, in the main right. categories. What? Quarterbacks, Offenses. receivers, offense categories. Now, for you folks who play in an IDP league, um, well, we're not doing that. Yeah. But we are. there's certain people here that are going to be playing in a league with IDPs, and that will be interesting to see how that works out. Yes. For you folks who are not attuned to fantasy, it means individual defensive players. Right. So, so we won't do it. Well, we're going to start with – our top five quarterback this picks is for 2011 like, season. And this is just uh, top five in any order because let's face it, the difference between these guys is an eyelash. It is. And it could change at any time. And we, right. we, 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 we sat here and went with, we figured Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Mike Vick, and Peyton Manning are your sure top five. Now, where it got interesting is we said, okay, now who can be the breakout players that can come in and actually maybe have, work their way into the top five this season? Right. Or have a, or just have put up yeah, put really up good numbers. You. Right. So Josh Freeman out of Tampa, mm-hmm. Matt Stafford out of Detroit if he can stay healthy. You got Kevin Colbin, Arizona, because you figure with Hightower gone and Beanie Wells as your starting tailback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then Kyle Orton, because I don't even see – I mean, his receiver led the league in receiving yards. Yeah, Kyle, had to I mean, throw he, the yeah Brandon ball. Lloyd led to – And then, I hope you're sitting down, <laughs> Rex Grossman. Now – Needless to say, I had nothing to do with and that. And why we came up – why, why well, we came up with Rex Grossman. We – Well, no. I mean, Jimmy and I – Jimmy, yeah, yeah, Jimmy and I – And Jimmy's not a Redskins fan. No, okay? no. But he said to me, he goes, what about Matt Schaub? Is it Schaub or Schaub or Schwab whatever, or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? Kyle Shanahan, his offensive coordinator, bolted and went to work with his father in D.C. Now you've got him working in D.C. with Rex Grossman, and you saw Shop's numbers dive last year, and now all of a sudden you got Rex Grossman, who can throw the ball, not deep down the field, but he's got all these little weapons, and he's going to be in an offense, if he can stay healthy, that he starts in, and he could put up some numbers. You know what I mean? Is he going to probably put up the numbers? And people go, oh, the Redskins suck. The Redskins can suck ass, but that doesn't mean that their quarterback still can't put up numbers. True. You know right. what I mean? Because it is can, fantasy. And that's yeah, it's fantasy. I think, I think they're going to throw the ball a decent amount. Yeah. and, and I, so if he, if he gets time, that's really the key. If they give him a few seconds. There's yeah. not a pro quarterback well, in the NFL who's not going to do well if you give mm, him time. Yeah. Even well, Charlie Whitehurst. <laughs> but once you I people who play, who play fantasy have shit. to know, take it from somebody like myself who has won my leagues and also Jimmy. George? George? George doesn't care. What'd you get for winning? Huh? What'd you get for winning? Was it a money league? Talk to talk to Miss Bedford, Shorty, your mom. I She'll you. tell you what I got for winning. Yeah, you gave her money and now I have new shoes. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but you can't always go about how good the fucking team is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's about guys see. that are just going to put up numbers. Yeah, you got to look at numbers. I don't care if they go 0 and 16. If he throws for right. a touchdown or two every game and puts up 300 yards, that's all I can That's it, right. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it will be. Now, that moves us on to the top five running backs. And top we just did this by straight running backs, not point per reception running backs. Right. There's a little right. differentiation, but whatever. Yeah. And, and uh, what did we come up with? Adrian Peterson, Chris Johnson. And we know he's not in camp yet, but we're assuming that he's eventually going to report. Yeah. Right. If he reports to camp, um, Chris Johnson, Arian Foster. Jamal. Jamal. Charles. <laughs> Jamal. He just sounds like a brother sitting up yes. in the fucking stripper club going. Stripper Jamal. club? Not a strip club, a no, stripper club. Stripper club. Wow, sure. well, and Ray Rice. Uh huh. And I patented that shit. And Ray Rice. Now, breakouts. Tim Hightower, because let's face it, the Redskins will probably 50 50 split on the run. Well, pass. especially if it's a, a point per reception league, because Tim Hightower is great at catching. He, yeah, he comes back out of backfield, backfield, catches a lot of pass. So, yeah, Tim Hightower actually could. Here, here's another one, in my opinion. He's not an every down back, but good for your PPR leagues is Javad Best. Yeah. Um, Javad, isn't it Javad? Javad I mean, I don't Javad. know if you're trying to rename the brother. I mean, he's probably watching the show right now going, how do I get Do you know how Javad? many people I've met in my lifetime with that fucking, that group of letters in their first name? I None. can actually side with you because I don't know anybody Bullshit. named Javad. I don't know. I mean, I know. I'm Come on. Going on. Your side of the tree? I'm, I'm I brother. Your side of that fucking family tree. I know got, the brown side of the tree. Like that. <laughs> There's no Javads in the family. Or Javads or Jovads or none of that shit. Anyway. We all have regular Negro names. Uh, well, right. Right. Maybe I'll go Muslim and be Muhammad soon. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Anyway, okay. and then we got LeGarrette Blount and LeSean. LeGarrette. We got some real cool names. Look look at this. In the top five breakouts, okay, we've got Javid, LeGarrette, and LaShawn. Are they brothers? No, actually, they're all white. They're all black. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on to the top five wideouts. We're going to go with Andre Johnson, Roddy White, Calvin Johnson, Hakeem Nix, and Larry Fitzgerald. Now, the breakouts. Larry Fitzgerald. Um, the breakouts. I think we we agreed that Des Bryant. This could be his year at breakout because you Especially know if he plays football. And Roy it, Williams. Is, I mean, you know, just focuses but, on football. It, football right? And Roy Williams isn't there to ask you to carry his pads anymore, so you don't <laughs> have to go out and buy a seventy-five thousand dollars steak dinner yeah. or however much that dinner costs. Exactly. And if Romo, it, it, all, it all depends on Romo right. being healthy. But if Romo stays healthy all year, you can expect. Des Bryant put up some, and probably on the other side, Miles Austin put up some decent numbers too. But we put, went with Des Bryant. We also went with Ocho Cinco. George was really, really high on Ocho Cinco. I, agree. I, agree I with mean, he stuck that. that mug in his bong and was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, Ocho I, Cinco. No, I, I agree <laughs> with him on that. <laughs> right, these two, you know what I'm saying? I, I, just, I was like, I'll pass. Tom Brady loves to he's throw got, the ball and pass. he's going to find targets. He's got those two tight ends. Yeah. He's got Wes Welker. He's got your fucking uncle, Dion Branch, because y'all are about in the same age demographic. <laughs> and then right. you're going to have. Throw that yeah, Ocho Cinco to that? I mean, right. just there's just lots of okay. Weapons. Well, Ocho Cinco will do a good if he doesn't get in an MMA fight, he doesn't ride bulls, and he doesn't fucking do reality Dude, shows. Because he, he has any of those looking, distractions. He's actually looking for a roommate up in Boston. He's like, he's going to live with the yeah. family. 
Yeah, he's going to live with a family. See, in okay. my opinion, Ocho Cinco is more worried about fucking being Hollywood like A-Rod than fucking playing football at this point in time in his career. Is Ocho Cinco showing up at the poker games? At least Ocho don't drink. You don't know if Ocho. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who Ocho knows? broke up with that girl he gave it a big stupid-ass ring to, Oh, too. really? Yeah, he was supposed to get murdered. Really? Yep, smart move. Well, he's going to be at the club Dude, looking for a new one. That getting paid next to nothing to play mm-hmm. in fucking New England. Yeah. He's getting like yeah. That's what they do. Reclamation projects. He, he's seen a Super Bowl ring. Anyway. He, he, yeah. He could retire with a Super Bowl ring and he actually could get his, his get a little bit more ink going. Mike Sims Walker. Now, Mike Sims Walker, guys, could be a, a great guy. If, if fantasy last year is decent in Jacksonville. He was uh, Garrard's, you know, right. big target. Now he is, he's gone to the Rams, right? Yeah. See. And so now you could look at... Uh, Sam Bradford. Christ, Sam Bradford being able to have somebody to hook up Sam with. Sam Bradford, you know Steven Jackson. So, <laughs> Steve Jackson. So all of a sudden, that could be his big play, man. So right. you could see Mike Sims Walker really have a breakout year in, uh, in St. Louis this year. And then we had, of course, who everybody is high on, and we think they literally could blow up Julio Jones. One of the big, in a great situation. They're, they're saying he's a freak. They, they, they said the shit he does in practice is Randy Moss-esque. He's big, he's fast, he's quick, he can run a pattern. And now you've got people that probably have to double-team Roddy White because right. he's so he's nasty. He's going to be the second target. He's he going to be the second fly. target. Matt Ryan is going to fucking blow up. He's going to light up. I mean, if, 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 if Julio Jones could end up possibly having a better season than Roddy White, you just don't know. You, yeah. So, anyway, that is our top fucking five fantasy uh On the picks. offensive side. On the That's offensive right. side. And no, we're not going with defenses or special teams. That That's just what we think now. Yeah. We're on to something sticking with football. You want them to tell us, to tell them on the comment board, they can tell us their top five. I don't picks. give a shit. Yeah, George doesn't give a shit. <laughs> now, go ahead, George. <laughs> College football. We had a big shakeup last year with Nebraska moving, Boise State moving, um, TCU moving, Colorado moving, and it doesn't seem like we're done. The big... Yeah. Word on street is that Missouri and Texas A&M are leaving the Big yeah. 12 to go to the SEC. Mm-hmm. And now, Florida State, too. It's Florida State about. and Clemson are coming supposedly from the ACC to the SEC. Mm-hmm. I mean, the bottom line is this. It's, it's, it's becoming all about money in college sports. These these, these, confer- these super universities are like, you know, we want to go where we can Explosion. make money, get exposure and stuff like this. Um then you even have some like BYU that kind of followed in the steps of Notre Dame. They're like, you know what? <laughs> well, they just kind of said, fuck it. We're not even going to associate. We're going to do like the Notre Dame thing and be independent, you know? Man, I'm playing college football on my Xbox, and I thought BYU was going to be worth a shit, and they were independent. So I took West Virginia and moved them from the Big East to the ACC, and I said, move BYU with them. Them rotten bastards didn't win Man, one got damn game. <laughs> didn't right. win one fucking game. They got beat by Duke. Right. That's Dude, rotten. That's, that's 44 white guys on the field. Yeah, man. You need some brothers for speed, okay? Well, You need some look, brothers for speed, and you at least need one Samoan guy for your life. You keep them out of the dorm room like the basketball. See, that's, right. that's the problem with BYU. Right. You can't drink, white girls dorm you room. can't smoke, you can't have premarital sex. Why do you say white girls like there's any other one on that campus but white women? <laughs> they, is, like, mean, is there a colored dorm, too? <laughs> I can just <laughs> We gotta keep all them colors they over there, Bob. Colors over here, and the white ones over here, yeah. son. <laughs> Stay off that street. Yeah, but I mean, it's BYU needs to change some shit. Yeah. Stop playing sports for one. Just yeah. stop. That'll be your best chance at winning. Just some fucking just Mormons stop. that are out putting a hit on George right now. They ain't watching this shit. They're <laughs> no, they're not putting a hit on. They'll just come give him the Book of Mormon. That's right. They came knocking on Jesse's door one time. Mm-hmm. That was funny. with their bicycles and everything. I mean, yeah, we are saying we, no, we're not hating on you guys. We're just saying. Worry, none of them are watching. <laughs> anyway, it looks like college football is not done getting mixed up. Because yeah. to me, now Texas has got to take a step back and go, shit. Because it's Texas and Oklahoma. That's all that's going to be left in the Big 12. Well, I'm going to tell you what, man. The, fuck, the Big 12 is quickly becoming the fucking Titanic. Motherfuckers are like, yeah. <laughs> fucking shit's well, going Texas, down. Texas probably Band is playing. Get... Texas is like, time to get on the lifeboat, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they're like, you know, like <laughs> Oklahoma's like, not without me, bitches. I mean, it is going. And Jimmy brought up a good point, and I know most of y'all think I hate Jimmy, but <laughs> only on Sundays. That, well, you guys don't realize that Jimmy, I don't think, I think people think like Jimmy and I are, I mean, Jimmy and I are friends. So George and Jimmy are like best friends, okay? I've known Jimmy since ninth grade. Since ninth grade, okay. That's like Let's, 1994. That's right. a while ago. Okay. Yeah. Jimmy and I just tend to agree on things because when George disagrees with you, <laughs> he sounds off like a fucking foghorn or a fucking boat. One of those things that go, <laughs> Jimmy brought up a good point. What is it? Um, he seems to think that when we're all said and done, you're going to have 
football conferences and you're going to have basketball conferences. And that's the way it's just going to be split yeah. up. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a team in the SEC now that's good at basketball. I know all your Florida, 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 Florida. Mm-hmm. Look, motherfucker, I don't remember what I did yesterday. Yeah. So I'm sure shit not going to remember Florida winning two national titles or however many they won. Yeah. Because they haven't done shit since. Yeah. yeah. It's more like just traditional. I mean, you've got like the Big East, which is definitely a basketball yes. conference. Mm-hmm. The ACC, if they basketball. lose Florida State, it's definitely a basketball, basketball conference. Basketball conference, right. And then the SEC, you think of football. Yeah. Back 10, you think of football. Yeah. I mean, the problem, and, and, and honestly, the, the best all around conference in the country right now, seriously, is the Big Ten. The Big Ten yes, has. I would think it's the SEC. I don't know. All I, around? Yeah, and all around. Basketball included? Because they got Kentucky and basketball. I mean, nah, they, they that's a good point. Florida I didn't think about that. Good. I mean, yeah. you know, those teams, they, they've got good And athletes. they definitely have better baseball than the Big Ten. I mean, baseball, they're yeah. fucking. What's I mean, baseball? I know. I know. But the SEC is strong in football, strong in basketball. But yeah, because they had Florida won the national championship two out of the last five years. Didn't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. They're really good at swimming. Are they? And they definitely have the hottest women. Do they? Yeah. When have you been down there to see that, Jimmy? I just uh, want Jimmy to film. I want him to follow. Oh, you don't have to go down there. You don't watch the game on TV. Watch yeah. that shit on TV, man. Uh, Stone body. Uh, good. Uh-huh, oh, gotcha. shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, well, makes sense. Now, now, let's get off of the fucking big ass fucking NCAA conference mix up and let's uh, move into MMA slash boxing. Slash. Combat sports. Yeah, yeah, combat sports. And we're not talking about sex with Jimmy's mom. Because <laughs> I can be some fucking yeah. really medieval shit. <laughs> Kimbo Slice fought last night. Mm-hmm. Does anyone remember him? Kevin Ferguson got the big bushy beard. He decided he's going to go in the boxing. And a four round fight lasted 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm was. just glad it wasn't in someone's backyard. So. Yeah, he fought in a ring with ropes and boxing gloves. That was in someone's backyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sadly, Kimbo Slice boxes like this. Yeah, like this. I'm so if, you're, if I'm a good fighter in Kimbo Slice now, you guys have to remember all you guys that fucking have his Kimbo's nuts Seth right Petruzzoli. here. Seth Petruzzoli. Yeah, crushed him. Now, if you're fighting. Boxing, you're going to be boxing heavyweights. Boom, pop, snoring. You know what I mean? Imagine if someone, what's the what's the boy over across the uh, across uh-huh. the Atlantic that just fought? Uh, oh, David, uh, David Hay? Hay, hey, yeah. Uh, imagine Hay or fucking one of the dancing. fucking Klitschko brothers fighting someone. Because that's the, that's the cat, that's, he, he'd be fighting heavies. Yeah. Come on, I mean, man. Kimbo, I mean, I, I like Kimbo. I mean, I think so he's, do I. you know, done, done a lot, but he's a sideshow. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's like a circus. Yeah. He can I juggle. Mean, yeah. You know, I mean, he juggles various careers, it seems. Obviously, <laughs> boxing, MMA, bodyguarding. bodyguarding. Now, about the only news going on in MMA besides the fight tonight. Yep. Um, Overeem and Golden Glory have decided that they're going to talk with Dana White and try to get this worked out. Okay. Because supposedly Dana White's biggest thing is, is we don't pay managers, we pay fighters. Right. So I guess they're going to get the shit worked out and Overeem will fight in the UFC after all. I think, and I told George, my conspiracy theory. Junior Dos Santos. Um, That's who I want to see him fight. Yeah, that would be a good fight. He will get fucked. Um, uh, I would. I think that it was the best thing for Dana White. I think for UFC to basically take over Reem and say, cut him, have a legitimate reason to cut him because he was complaining about his big toe, and then now all of a sudden, it's like. He's a free agent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, you know, he, he's not locked into that strike force contract, contract well, where, go I, ahead. I, to me, I think between the cutting of Fedor and this whole thing with Overeem, it's basically given Dana White the ability in the very near future, and by near future, I mean 12 to 18 months, to basically shut down strike force. That's right. what he's going to do. And yeah. Because those are their two big names, they're two big people, and he's already been able to get them basically out of the strike force mold. Dan Henderson's out of contract. He's going to be back in the UFC. Right. Nick Diaz, or Nate Diaz is mm-hmm. already fighting in the UFC. So basically, strike force is, is on borrowed time. Is on borrowed time. And, and that's exactly what he wants. And I think I think he, by doing this, the way cutting over him and now saying, okay, working with Golden Glory to get him back under a UFC contract, I think all of a sudden now he can make these big fights with Overeem fighting these 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 top tier heavyweight guys happen quicker. Now, how many chances does Overeem get? Is this going to be like a James Tony thing, a Kimbo Slice thing? No, I think, like, uh, I think he'll at least get two to three losses if he comes in and loses that. I, well, what if he walks in? Let's say, because me personally, I want to see Overeem fight uh, 
Junior Dos Santos. I think Overeem is not going to fight a big name person right away. Who's he I fighting? Think he could, Boy, I, now it's funny. I'm going to tell you just who I think would be a great person for him to fight. I, someone actually on the comment board said, when Brock Lesnar comes back in early 2012, who do you think he should fight? And I responded and said, Matt Mitrione. I think that's a tough fight. I, I, I think it was good. Fight. I think Matt Mitrione fighting Overeem would be Matt Mitrione is nasty. His fucking he is quick as fucking shit. Yeah. I mean, you know he really is. You know what I'm saying? Should I repeat that? He is quick as fucking shit, and he deceiving. Quick as shit. He depends shit is him. quick. I don't know if you guys know how quick. You might want to wait. It depends on the shit. meal you is had. Is this a Mexican shit, or <laughs> we talk about like, Mexican by Mexican food? Yeah, Black. don't be saying like he said Mexican. No, He's Oriental. <laughs> Oriental food, right? Which soul is now food? Asian food, soul food, yes. Or are we talking about like hamburgers and hot dog shit? Because I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm talking about probably American cafe shit. You know, uh, if I get some Mexican food in me. Oh, yeah, Mexican shits are sort of fast. I said Mexican run, shits are fast. Yeah, yeah. So, but he is quick as shit. Okay, um, and he's got great hands. Now, Overeem. Who do you want to see Overeem fight? Q-tip. Oh, me? I mean, I would... Honestly, I'd throw him in there with one of the big guys. I mean, why is he going to get a warm-up fight? Put him in there with a... Even if it's Shane Carwin. I, that's the person I was thinking of. He would fuck Shane Carwin up. I mean, those guys are both huge. But I'm going to tell you what. If Shane Carwin bulled him and take, took him to the ground, all of a sudden you're taking him to the I mean, ground. How much ground game does Overeem have? Yeah, all we these haven't people seen Overeem fight anybody of quality, really, for no. a while. A long time. And and let me tell you something. If Overeem... You look at Overeem's record. He's... he's when he gets taken to the ground. Now, another thing that comes into play is all of a sudden, now you're talking about a complete different type of drug testing. Right. Okay? You, yes. I, I, everybody's going to be... Ugh. You have to question it. it. it you, it's it's going to be much more thorough. Okay? Oh. Thorough. You know what I'm saying? And so... And if you guys think Kevin is just making that up, go back and watch when Overeem fought Chuck Liddell in 2001, I think, or 2002 at right. the, over in Japan. Mm -hmm. He looked like... I mean, he was a skinny guy. He was a light head. Now look at him. He's, he's a little guy. Now all of a sudden... It's just a lot of good food and fucking training really hard. Like, now, yeah. I, I could understand if he was 18 at that time. And yeah, I heard in Amsterdam up, they have a lot of that. Huh? No. I no. Mean, there, there's something going on there. Yeah, he's, he's definitely... I mean, it's, 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 it's no secret that he's been jacked. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not just him. There's a lot of fighters that have been jacked. A lot of people have been jacked. Yeah. But now all of a sudden you take that out of the equation and he's got to come into UFC where... Just in a couple. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what's going on. I mean, it all was of a sudden, funny, like we had always said, I was watching an interview of Chael Son, and he talked about what we said about just having an open division, and fuck, I don't care if dudes right. want to do whatever. Right. You know, no shit, because he takes open. tests. So yeah, yeah he was, so, well, he'd be happy. Yeah. He'd be the first guy in line. Yeah. That's funny shit. I, there was one thing about the Chael Son video. It was funny. I, I he made a comment and um, about. It, I was thought about this. Like he made a comment about Anderson Silva, which I agree with. When he was fighting, what's the guy? Okami. So, Okami. He said, "Okay, he fought Okami and he threw down the elbow and he lost the fight." And, and Son was like, "He lost the fight." Okami the guy was him. right, huh? Okami. No, 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 no. It was a disqualification. It was a disqualification. Oh, illegal, I believe it was an illegal kick. Right. So during his his interview, the guy goes, "Well, he lost uh, whatever the guy's name, Ariel, whatever." Said he lost because it was a disqualification. And then Son says, "Yeah, it was a disqualification." He knew. What he was doing, you know, when he threw that, he was losing a fight and he threw that down. He goes, We know about what's illegal and what's not. Well, at the same time, Son is kind of a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew that he shouldn't have been taking any fucking PEDs. Mm -hmm. And when he fought, he fought Silva, but he fucking took them. Right. Or and if he, he was going to take them, he needs to follow the proper procedures. Right. Like the protocol. The, yeah. The, 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 the protocol. And the he didn't. Work. So, I mean, it's the same thing. Anyway, tonight's main event should be a fucking barn burner with uh, Dan Hardy and Chris Lytle. Yeah. That should be yeah, good. And Ben be Henderson good. has sat there and said, look, if I win this fight, and look, I understand. When you watch this shit, it's Monday. It's already happened. But you have to remember. Ben Henderson, just, he's the Blasian, right? Yeah. yeah he's he, he, Jim said, Miller. he says if he beats Jim Miller, he's like, I want a title fight. Because let's face it, Jim Miller sat there and said, I want a title fight. Dana's like, no. Yeah. No. But if Jim Miller wins this, he might get a title yeah, shot. I mean, this is at 155. Yeah. I'm so not enamored with Gray Maynard or Frankie Edgar. No, neither am I. So I am. He is. Yeah, I, I like Frankie Edgar, man. I think that guy's just got a lot of fucking heart. I can't. Heart only goes so far. Yeah. I'll take talent any day. I think he's got talent and heart. I think the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Later.